So we are in the lecture hall of the Anglatanis Institute of New York. Are, I'm going to interview Wendy Dryden, professor of psychotherapeutic studies at the Goldsmith University of London. Professor Dryden published three interesting papers in this current year, or maybe next year going to publish it. Not this year. This year? Thank you. The first one was about the possible mistakes in uh, completing the ABC made by... Well, made by four groups, I'll, I'll, um, I'll tell you about that. Okay. So, um, initially, uh, I did a study uh, um, in 2008, which was published in 2008, and it was um, rising out of work I was doing at a private hospital in London. I ran a, um, an, a, uh, an inpatient and outpatient group therapy program. And they, in order to, they, people would start on a, if you like, a, a general program and then when they were ready they would come into the to the CBT or oh, yes. And what they were given when they were ready to come in it was they were given um, a session by one of the um, psychology assistants, an introduction to the ABCs of our OBT. Now, um, what we did was to do some research about um, people's um, understandings and reactions to, to, uh, uh, to that. And that was published as I said, about four years ago. Now, a couple of years ago, I noted that whenever I read uh, a counselling and psychotherapy textbook which was authored, mm -hmm. as opposed to edited, the authored approach looks one or two people write on all the approaches, whereas the edited one, you, in, you are invite experts to write on their particular field. Mm -hmm. So what I found was some errors and mistakes made, and then, the, then I, that stimulated me to do a study of 20 psychotherapy and counselling textbooks mm -hmm. between certain periods, and I went over very, very uh, detailed everything they said about the ABCs of REBT that, that could be seen either as a mistake mm -hmm. or would confuse the reader. And I found that these 20 psychotherapy uh, authors made over about, about 230 errors or, or points that would confuse the reader. And um, they, they would occur either at A or B or C. And also I made the point of looking at their language in terms of causation. So when they said, um, you know, something was caused by beliefs, that's not according to RGT theory. You know? We don't hold to a causation model. So I, I looked at all that and found that even um, people who write textbooks are supposedly authorities in the field, make a number of errors, which then people reading this think is the truth. So I, I followed that up with a study which is also uh, published in the same issue that's coming out in September. I invited a number of REBT therapists on the associate fellowship list. Um, no, sorry, the, um, yeah, that's right. I, I, I had to be a social fellow, uh, fellows um, in good standing, the referral list anyway. And a number of people agreed to do it. What I asked them to do was to explain the ABCs to a, um, a graduate school, how they would do that, what concepts they would use, how they would do that, and to give an example. And I also found that this group of trained REBT therapists also made a number of errors in the States. Finally, I looked at the latest book by Albert Ellis and his wife, Debbie Joffe Ellis, and I went through that and found that they made about 72 errors and confusions. So, um, you know, so I think the point I made was yes. is it's, it's not as easy as ABC. It's very easy to make 
you know, to you know, to not be clear about the ABCs. And one of my passions is that that we need to give clear, authoritative information. Yes. Uh, and if we don't do it here in this in this in this esteemed building, then where are we going to do it? Um, I liken the Albert Ellis Institute to the Vatican, um, in the sense that this is the this is the place of authority. And um, you know we need to, to actually make sure that at least we're giving out accurate information. I understand that the papers are complex and it would be useless to speak about all the mistakes. But can you tell us a particularly intolerable mistake? Well, of course, the RBT therapists would say that no mistakes are intolerable. But you know, some are more difficult to accept than others. And I think that, that the thing that I find is, um, well, let's, let's put the, the most common, yes. is that people who mistake beliefs for inferences. Ah. So you would read this. And also, people who don't emphasize the role of the musts. Ah, yes. you know? So irrational beliefs that are, that, that are given accurately uh, when it comes to anti uh, sorry, uh, sorry, awfulizing, low frustration tolerance and, and the various depreciation things. But if the musts are not in there, and the classical REBT position is that you know, the musts are at the very poor experience. And but inferences, so, so that you might say um, uh, somebody, an example that was, uh, that, was, uh, that was given in one of these books was saying, and the irrational belief was, it's unfair that this has happened. Well, that's an inference. Okay. And, and it's not an irrational belief. And those mistakes kept appearing and appearing and more and more. Now, actually, one of the, the authors of one of the textbooks um, mentioned the name of the therapy six times and never got the name of the therapy right. The name of the therapy is Rational Emotive Behaviour Therapy. No okay. hyphens. They either call it as rational hyphen emotive behavior therapy, rational behavior emotive therapy. Uh, you know, they did not get the name of the therapy right on any occasion. So, you know, I mean, I was just, well, if I had any hair to pull out, I would be pulling it out because it's, it, is, it is difficult. Not intolerable, but difficult to yes. pull out. I, I can assure you that in this training, I just I just did this central role of the must of the demands was clear. <laughs> so it was, right. I, I, I didn't understand before. Well, I think I, I'm, I'm sure that the spirit of Albert Ellis listening to you would be very pleased that that is the case. Uh -huh. So, as a final question, we know that REBT was strongly influenced by, by this great personality of Albert Ellis, and you recently also published this article about him, about... Well, it was in the context of a spe um, special issue uh, on, um, dedicated in the journal to Albert Ellis. It was edited by Christine Doyle, um, director of the Institute of Manor. And um, the article that I wrote um, made it quite clear that... Um, about what I consider to be Alice's contribution to not only our LGBT but the field of that we owe him an enormous debt, mm. but that there are certain things that we will miss on his passing, and certain things that I, that I think you know, we wouldn't miss. And I, I kind of uh, pointed out, um, in the spirit of honesty, uh, you know, what those things were. Yes. Because I'm sure when I go, my hopefully my students would say, well, we miss these things about driving, but we don't miss those things. And I think that's all part of being a fallible human being that people miss. But I think what we will miss most is, is A, his insightful mind, um, tremendously clear, insightful mind, and that um, his ability to uh, write on ROBT as applied to a whole host of subjects mm -hmm. and his grasp of an enormous amount of information. I think that is something that I don't think anybody else you know, you know, will be able to, you know, to replace. But I think the things that we're not going to miss is that I think that, in a way, what Alice was not uh, very good at as being 
very specific in talking about the, the nitty gritty of psychotherapy. If you read, uh, uh, bit, if you read his books about the practice, mm -hmm. they are they are quite general in nature. Yes. And I think that you know what I've tried to do is to bring some level of specificity to you know to the writing. So I don't necessarily will miss you know uh, more books on you can use these general right. techniques. He wasn't good at communicating his vast, nuanced approach to therapy. Um, you, you might be able to get that out of him by interviewing him carefully enough, as you might be interviewing me. But in general, sitting down and writing, uh, you know, that wasn't one of his, his strengths. I also think we may not miss his, his, uh, his style. Now, Ellis was commanding, you know, strong feelings yes. you know, for and against. And I think that, in a way, uh, too much emphasis on his style, too much emphasis on certain aspects like shame attacking exercises, taking a banana for a walk, certain things. And, you know, that's fine, but I think what happened was that it gave people an opportunity to dismiss our MBT, because this is a therapy where you shout at people, you take bananas for a walk, and you sing songs. Yeah. Now we do all that, but I think that, that I think I think in a way that needed to be you know really downplayed. And I believe in the importance of you know step out of character exercise and risk taking exercises rather than the shame attacking exercise, which were amusing but can really create an unfortunate impression mm -hmm. in the minds of more serious professionals. Right. I don't want REBT to be marginalised as, as, as an, an anachronistic approach to psychotherapy where we take bananas for a walk. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.